know today from quantum physics is as follows. Years ago, thanks to the Big Bang, we already knew that everything in the universe had been formed by concentration of energy. Today, this situation has been reached to the basis of matter with super zooming microscopes that have been proven precisely and it has been seen that all matter is made of light filaments. The fact that these materials are different is caused by the energy threads vibrating in the variety of coming together. So, essentially, everything we see is light. This scientific data also confirms the idea that everything is made of God's light, referred to by Islamic Sufism. We will talk about this in more detail later on. Allah is the light of the heavens and the earth. Surah Nur 35 do not try and bend the spoon. That's impossible. Instead, only try to realize the truth. What truth? There is no spoon. Until the beginning of the 19th, dark materialism which argued there is matter and there is no beyond was dominant as we progress it in the field of physics and deepen it in the subatomic realm. Since 1910-1920, Science has shown that there is no such thing as matter anymore. Our limited five senses make it seem as if there is matter. Everything called matter originates from atoms, and the fluctuations of light quanta in their environments. Our sense organs perceive a limited part of what is happening anyway. Our eyes are limited by the capacity to receive wavelengths between 4 and 7 tenths of a centimeter while our ears can only receive waves between 16 and 16,000 Hz. Scientists who were bewildered by these realities asserted that the cosmos was a simulation founded by a sophisticated civilization. Physicists, we are astounded by the emergence of the quantum realm that contained all these facts. Even quantum is called Einstein's fearful dream. Einstein did not want to accept the quantum theory first put forward by Niels Bohr. He had long debates with Niels Bohr, but as a scientist, he eventually accepted these facts. Right now, we're inside a computer program. Is it really so hard to believe? This isn't real. What is real? How do you define real? If you're talking about what you can feel, what you can smell, what you can taste and see, then real is simply electrical signals interpreted by your brain. In fact, when you sit on a chair, the atoms of chair and atoms of your skin do not even touch each other. When you sit on a chair, the electrons covering the atoms on your bottom and the electrons covering the atoms that are on the surface of the chair are pushing each other. Because, in terms of electromagnetic force, equal charges push each other. In short, you are not sitting on the chair but on the electrons covering the chair. The tactile sensation, like roughness of the chair, its texture, and such senses occur in this way. Thus, the simulation theory scientists have been arguing is derived from these facts. Professor Martin Rees from the University of Cambridge once argued that we may be living inside of a computer simulation created by a civilization far superior to ourselves. Everything was nothing but emptiness and light, as like a computer game, and it was just our brain who perceives that as reality. Again, according to Quran, the world was created from nothing. The fact that atoms as we know are hollow on the inside, and everything exists by lights called strings, prove that nothing truly really ever existed before. Thus, the cosmos came into existence from nothing. Similarly, the fact that the matter and antimatter was at the same level when the cosmos was created, or that when antimatter and matter merges, everything will be non existent, proves that the cosmos was in fact existed out of nothingness. All of these facts are in accordance with the verse of Quran telling that the world was created out of nothing, and with the word of Prophet Muhammad saying that the world is worthless even when compared to the wing of a mere fly. Again, according to deductions they made from Quran, Islamic mysticists have been arguing over centuries that nothing really ever exists in our world, and everything is in fact just the reflections of Allah and His qualities. That view in Islam too, saying nothing exists but meaning, appellation and cipher is coherent with the scientific data. Another interesting fact is that the Quran actually tells that our world is a simulation. As you may all know, simulations are composed of codes. As a simple example to this, video games that we all play are a form of simulation and they are made out of codes. 
Codes decides what happens in this world, and codes can make everything possible. In Quran, it is written that everything that occurs in our world occurs because they were written in Lahwi Mahwuz, which translated to protected tablet, just like the written computer codes. According to Quran, the way everything happens and exists, or will happen and will exist, are incoherent and one with the writings in the protected tablet. To put simply, if something is not written in the Lahwi Mahus, which means protected tablet, it has never happened and will never happen. So, just like we embrace the simulation as real, which can only be existed by codes, the world can only exist with the protected tablet. We embrace our world as real, but it is only the reflection. And this worldly life is not but diversion and amusement, and indeed the home of the hereafter that is the eternal life, if only they knew. Alongside many scientists have reported that the metaphysical events happening in our three-dimensional world are actually mere reflections of the events happened in the fourth dimension. In 1985, Dr. Stanislav Grof said that consciousness cannot be explained by a neuropsychological model. But at the subatomic level, consciousness is from another dimension, that is, it can only be explained by the holographic model. In 1987, the physicist Elaine Wolf described dreams as traveling of consciousness to other dimensions. In 1980, Dr. Kenneth Ream defined that as a transaction of consciousness from one hologramic dimension to another as a result of his pre-death experiments. Also, Johann Karl Frederick Zöllner, who is a professor of astronomy at the University of Leipzig, mentioned in his book titled Transcendental Physics in 1878 that he was investigating the phenomena of unreasonable matter formation, annihilation, or unreasonable movements of matter. Based on his experiments and observations, he linked these events to the fourth dimension. About the Creator in the fifth verse of Surat Safad in the Quran, it is said that He is the Lord of the heavens and the earth, and everything in between, and the Lord of all east. Here, the original of the world translated as Mesharik, that is east, strictly means dimensions. Because people of our world could not comprehend the meaning of the word Orient, it was translated as Eastern. However, in the Arabic language, which is a very extensive and sophisticated language, rooting back to the ancient Aramaic language, Orient actually means dimensions. As you will see on the later parts, in the ancient times too, advanced technologies was being used and people definitely knew what dimensions meant.